Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fire Play. Today, we are in for a very, very special treat. We have Kylie Clark joining us this morning, and I am so incredibly excited to be able to share this conversation with everyone because they're in for, I think, quite a surprise and quite a treat. All right. Carly, thank you so much for your time and coming over to my house and recording this podcast. How are you? You're welcome. Uh, really good. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. I'm well. All right. So I have a bit of a confession. I have been following you on Instagram for a really long time. And every time I see your Instagram stories, you're working, you're hustling, you are on construction sites, you are doing interior design stuff, you are, you're working out, um, but then you're back working again. You're also a single mother. What are you, like, what are you always on the go? I mean, you've got a huge amount of energy. Uh, yeah, I would probably say I do have a huge <laughs> amount of energy and sometimes I wonder where I get it from. Uh, I guess I'm seeing that develop in my daughter because sometimes I say to my mum, gee, where does she get that energy from? And then she looks at me and thinks, where do you think? <laughs> right in front of you. <laughs> it, it's oh. just, I guess I have, um, I probably do have high expectations of myself and mm. I, I want to achieve a certain level in life. And I think also when you do achieve that, you also then want to level up. So I think that's what's really important, reassessing your life, where you are, um, how you've achieved those goals, how you got there. Could you better that next time around? And if you have achieved them, don't sit and be stagnant. Make sure that you put down some new goals, um, whether evolve. it's personal and you know professional, and make sure, yes, you do evolve. Wow, you are so driven. So we actually have a mutual friend slash manager in common, Corey Cooper. That we do. And I, I was on the phone to Corey. I'm like, Corey, like, What's the go with Kylie? She's always working. Like I'm always seeing her in in buildings, in sites, and um, you know, in in the, the what do they call those boots? The um, oh, the work boots. The work yeah. boots. You know. They just look really, really clean because I actually don't do a lot of work when it comes to that side <laughs> of things. Okay. But I um, definitely well, do the project the safety, management. You're wearing all the safety gear, <laughs> headgear, everything. The busy. Um, and Corey said, "Oh, Kylie's incredible. She like obviously such a hard worker, but she's really smart with her money. She's." Um, I think she made her first investment when she was 17 years old and, you know, she's done all these amazing things. And I, I was, wouldn't say flabbergasted, but I was like, oh, my God, I'm so inspired. And I was like, tell me more, tell me more. Anyway, so he didn't tell me more, but he said, you guys need to have a chat. Mm -hmm. So when did you make your first investment and how did this come about? Like what inspired you? Um, I think my mum has been very money conscious. So from a very young age, she... I guess, made us understand what it was like to save money. Mm. And for me personally, when I was quite young, I was saving up for my first car. So I think, I oh know this sounds back then, <laughs> 19, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not even sure what year it would have been. It, uh, I think you got your L's around 16 years of age. So I wanted to buy my first car. So she worked for a business, which she actually ended up working for them for 20 years. So I knew there was obviously a lot of stead where she was. And she said, look, it's always best to put your money where you get your best ROI. So I thought to myself, yep, I think this is something that I should, you know, start to do. So obviously I did have a lot of guidance from her. Mm -hmm. So I put some money into the business that she worked for and the return, can you believe it was 10%? which is absolutely wow. huge and you can only imagine that's really, really hard to come by these days. Yeah. So I said, yeah, you know, this is a really good idea. I guess it's money that I can put away. I guess it's that set and forget mentality. So I guess I learned that really, really easily um, at a young age to understand that if you've got a certain amount of money, you can put it aside, set, forget, just, um, you know, I guess enjoy the dividends at the end of the year and generally I would put it back in. I wanted to achieve getting my first car and I guess I actually did. It was $6,000, which was a lot of money in, yeah. I don't know, I think it might have been 1998 or 97, yep. I guess, yeah, looking back. $6,000 and that was, today is still a lot of money. Yeah, it is. And to be able to have afforded that, I did work at McDonald's as well, um, part-time during really? the studying and also doing dance. So, um, yeah, I guess that, you know, it all came from my mother's guidance. Wow. And obviously financial literacy is, as you've said, it was a gift that your mother gave to you. I mean, talking about return on investments, ROI, at 16, 17 years old, like that, there's a lot to take on. A lot of 16, 17 year olds we have no idea what ROI is. To learn that, that gift have you passed on to your daughter as well or is something that you're planning on 
doing with her. Absolutely. Um, sometimes she walks into my office and I'm like, as a joke, I always play with her and I play at her level. So I always say, welcome to Carly and Kelsey Lee's Constructions. How can I help you? <laughs> and she has a little bit of a gig. And I said, well, sweetie, I'm helping, you know, build this up so that one day, whether you do or don't want to take it over, um, there's still that opportunity there and there's an income for her. Mm-hmm. But I definitely won't be giving it to her for nothing. That's for sure. She needs to make sure she, you know, earns that. I think with my daughter, I've always believed that um, education is key. And I never, ever have thought that children are too young to learn. Other people might have different um, perceptions on that. But for me, I've never spoken to her like a baby. I've always spoken to her like a young adult. So I guess I tried to speak to her also in her own language. So she, I'd love for her to have a more entrepreneurial mindset. So I'm not saying she doesn't do chores. She definitely does chores. But the chores for money mentality is very much an employer-employee mindset, whereas to have an entrepreneurial mindset, I would love to see her be well-educated. So I guess reading another book for money or watching a documentary, those kind of things, things that she can still enjoy doing at her age of six, but I'm just trying to get her into a different mindset rather than working for someone and earning that money. Yes, she'll probably have to do that at a young age, but I want her to understand the difference. I guess the way that I teach her is that she likes something called Roblox and it's on her iPad and everyone around the world is playing Roblox. (laughs) So is Rocco. He drives me up the wall about it. (laughs) So uh, normally she says, I said, oh, wow, this house looks really beautiful. I've changed the wallpaper and obviously that's my kind of thing. So I'm like, oh, wow, I like your gingerbread wallpaper. And then she'll say to me, um, all of a sudden she ended up having three houses and I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. I said, how did you obtain three houses? Because initially I didn't know about the game. And so I took a valid interest and she actually said that, you know, we go and do chores. So they've got that mentality of, you know, we go and do chores and we earn money. And then obviously we can buy houses. We can change the furniture inside the house. We can sell the furniture. So I was like, this is good. It's making children understand the process. And I think that's sometimes where the dynamic is really hard between adults and children. Mm. They're not generally learning what it takes to be an adult and go to work, earn money or have your own business, earn money, pay bills, take them to school, et cetera. So I thought, well, this is really good. I actually quite like this game, besides the fact they like to play it way too long. Um, (laughs) And then she said, oh, mum, there's actually something called Robux. And I was like, oh, right, so what are Robux? And she said, well, you buy them. And I said, oh, so this is how the game makes money. And I was thinking, oh, okay. And I'm like, so is that different? Like you can't buy the same things on the Robux doing chores money as you can with Robux. And she said, that's right, but you would pay for them. So my friend got, and this is the, my friend got 800 Robux and it cost them $15. And I said, oh, okay. And she kept asking and asking. I said, oh, well, one day maybe I'll let you get Robux. That one day came and I said, look, so they've been thinking about it. And I, I do think that you can get the Robux, but you know, that pencil case you've got upstairs from your christening money, from your, um, you know, your uncle giving you money for your birthday. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And she said, well, I said, well, how about you go upstairs and you count out, so she learns coins, mm. the $15. You give me the $15 and I'll use my card to put the, your $15 on the Robux. Mm. And she goes, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I just can't wait. So she couldn't run up there fast enough. <laughs> and all in this time, it's her money that she's spending. Mm. Um, and I like this lesson because she learned very, very quickly the value of $15. And I said, now, before... I press go, $15 is probably two Anita ice cream. So they're about $7 each, $7.50 each. It's around about that. She said, so do you still want to buy the Robux? She said, yep. I said, okay, last thing is, is it's about the same amount as that pineapple toy that you bought the other week, the really big squishy one. And she, so she now understands the value of $15 because mm. she's seen it in different forms. That's so good. And then after that, um, she said, okay, mum, well, what can I get for the $15? So I wrote it out why she chose. So the jeans are 15. And so then she started to understand, oh, well, but if the jeans are 15, I'd really prefer probably the Easter Bunny headband. And then she was understanding how to juggle around what she would get at the end. I said, I don't want you to buy three things. And then all of a sudden you look down the page and think, no, I wish I spent my money on that. Mm. So I tried to make her understand that part of money. Yep. Yep, so and you then put it in context. Text it for her. Yeah. And it, there were so many different elements of getting to that end result. And then the end result was I sat there and she'd said to me, oh, no, 
I'm not buying those ripped jeans. They're $7 and it's my money. And the minute she said my money, she looked over to me with this smirk as if, oh, see, I can <laughs> see what's happened now. Yeah. It's because it's my money. She wasn't flippant with it and she wasn't just pressing go and spending money and going, oh, dear, there's, there's my 800 Robux gone. Yeah. I did something very similar with Rocco. Um, I made him wash my car or back in my car. Yes. Um, partly because his sister destroyed the back of it. But he had, and it took him a long time, and he realised it was hard work. It was a hot day. He was sweating. He was in there with a cloth and a vacuum cleaner. And when he got his money and went to spend it, he realised, okay, that took me two hours to clean my mum's car, mm. but I'm spending it within seconds. And he decided not to go and spend that money. It wasn't worth it. He, he had a value system applied, you know, two hours worth of slogging it to earn $10 or whatever it was that I paid him at the time to watch it go so quickly on something he didn't value. And that was a nice lesson and, and wake-up call. Why do you think it's so important that young people, in particular women, take care of their financial well-being just like you're teaching your daughter? Um, personally, I think because without great finance, you won't be able to pay all these great expensive prices. So mm. I'd say edu membership, a platinum one, if you want a platinum lifestyle, is $1,000 plus. Mm. You've got a personal training session that might be $80 to $120. And then if you want to go and do a bar class and mix it up, it's like $25 a pop. So how can you achieve all this greatness in lifestyle if you don't have a if you don't have great finance, if you don't have a budget, if you don't have an understanding. I think we all need to be really accountable yes. for our finances and what we do with it and how we reassess our situation. I think at the end of the day, you need to learn how to obtain money. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to use it. Uh, you need to learn how to monitor it and manage it. You need to learn how to invest it and you also need to learn how to grow it. It's that simple. Yeah, I think I've almost got goosebumps from that because that's just my mantra, you know, so beautifully said. Clearly you're incredibly focused and incredibly disciplined. I just read your beautiful article, was it Body and Soul, oh, yes. um, the other weekend. Yes, thank a you. fantastic article and incredible images of you as well, looking incredibly healthy and strong. You're driven, obviously, with finances. Where else in your life are you driven and motivated? I think for me it's an all-round thing. I think that you end up trying to find out what your balance is and where you're most driven and generally if you try to, you know, put 30% here, 30% there so you even it out across the board. I think my biggest thing at the moment has to be my priority is my daughter. Yeah. Um, she is only six years of age. I think that her direction in life now is... The way that you encourage them, the information that you give them, she's, you know, a complete sponge. So I I guess I want to be really, really present and that's what's um, most important to me. Then second to that would be building my business, Kylie Constructions. You know, it's, it's a completely different field. It's something that I haven't uh, really done before. I've only been doing it for about a year and a half now. But I've got a great team. It's, it's working really, really well. Obviously, I've done interior design for probably about 12 years or so now. So um, it's something that I'm really, really passionate about. And I think it, when you're passionate about anything, mm -hmm. you enjoy it. And when you enjoy it, it's a great journey and then it's, it's never work. Wow. Now, this is a personal question. Of course, you don't need to answer any of this, but do you have a budget? And I'm not asking you what your living expenses are, anything like that, but do you, do you have a budget? Because I think there's this sweeping generalisation that successful people don't worry about budgets. They kind of live in the moment or fly by the seat of their pants. Do you know what your living expenses are to a certain degree? I do. My budget is very, very simple. Is it a want or a need? It's something that's been instilled in me from a very young age, so I just continue to do that. Um, I think it's really, really important. Every quarterly I check my zero reports, so I have an understanding of where I currently sit and where I can penny pinch from here or there. I also want to reassess my situation sometimes. If you want to change your lifestyle, you might, might want to you know, take from Paul and give to Peter. Mm. So I think that that's really, really important. I think it's also um, super important to be resourceful in your life. I think sometimes we can get a little too kind of, I guess hooked up on the whole Instagram idea and sometimes it can be on a negative spiral um, you could look at others and and start to feel like you need to live up to the Joneses yep. she got this new watch look at that hat oh my god I don't have as many bikinis her and so on mm -hmm. and that could just 
go on forever. It's vicious and um, it's a bottomless pit. I absolutely, say. absolutely. And I understand the concepts of it and there's definitely pros to Instagram just like there's pros to everything. There's always a con and, you know, that can be one of them. I think for me this year I've reassessed even your wardrobe. I think it's a really good simple way of just looking at your wardrobe and thinking, you know what, have I even used that in the last 12 months to um, two years? I'm not sort of more so thinking even about the selling thing but something as simple as everything that you're so comfortable with and you've been wearing for the last 12 months, put that to the back and bring the other stuff to the front. No one's seen it for so long. They wouldn't even think about it anyway. Mm. And realistically, people are worried about what they're doing and not what you're doing. Mm. So, you know, change that up. Um, and another thing as well, like sometimes you don't have to look at the dollars you spend, but food. Food is something that we generally use every single day of our life. We can't live without it, food and drink. And if you're wasting that's, you know, that's money going down the drain, like literally going in the yeah. bin. So if you know that the bananas are going brown, just take five minutes to cut them up, put them in the freezer and there's your frozen fruit. There's so many things. Have a meal plan. Um, if you don't like to be that regimented, have a meal plan that I guess is, you know, a little stretchy here or there. So, you know, definitely Friday night's tacos and Saturday I'm going out. But if you know you're going out Saturday, make sure that the day you're having salads, it's not going to get wasted because you're not going to be around that weekend. I think if you're just conscious, you can make an effort to improve your finances. So not only are you incredibly driven and, and motivated, you're also, from the sounds of it, incredibly organised. Ah, uh, yes. Um, that, again, comes from my mum. She's super, super organised. So I think it's a tidy room, tidy mind scenario. As a minimalist or someone who incorporates a minimalistic philosophy mm. in my life I completely agree my stress anxiety levels subside substantially when I've got order in my house there's no clutter mm. it just removes all the noise and distractions and it just creates a, a very valuable sense of harmony and it allows me to move from goal to goal seamlessly when I I take out all the excess in my life so yes I, I do believe simple is best and I think mm -hmm. sometimes when you cull um, your life, whether it is your kitchen, you've got way too many pots, you know, that, that's where the confusion is, trying to get the drawer open and trying to get through, there's another few minutes. Like it's it's all about, you know, being quite consistent. Mm, and um, efficient. Consistent. Yeah, that's right. And the more you have, the more you seem to buy. The less you have, the less you seem to look at it. I think a big thing um, when I was writing my book a few years ago was don't let possessions possess you. Mm. And that's that's a huge thing. That's massive and very, very powerful. Can I ask you with something a bit quirky or a quirky request you could say? This month I'm doing Frugal February and it is for the month of February, and I keep on saying it's 30 days, it's actually 28 days. Yeah. I'm getting my maths is atrocious with my baby brain. I am basically being the world's biggest tight ass and every time I go to spend money I stop myself and I transfer that money proactively in a savings account and I watch it add up during the month. Yeah. Already I'm over $200 and I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to have a very frugal weekend because I've got lots of things to do at home and tidying and organising my home. Mm. I really believe no matter what financial situation people are in, everyone has one frugal hack oh. or a thing that they do. And I know you've probably already shared that by cutting up bananas and not letting anything go to waste. Mm. Is there anything particularly different or special to you where you feel really proud about saving money? Um, oh, gee. But it's a frugal one, so I feel like it has to be a little bit not exactly about finance, more so what you said about, you know, the home. Mm. Oh, gee, oh, my gosh. Even if it's um, like making your own coffee at home or. Yeah. Oh, um, look, I definitely would do that. I have noticed that, you know, $5 here, 550 there, 580 somewhere else. I mean, trust me, I'm giving the cheap, you know, high fives when it's 450 for a soy chai latte. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's really rare to come by. It is, it's isn't it? Insane. It is. I think sometimes too, for, probably for me, it's, you know, some people might get the makeup wipes that are actually from a makeup brand whereas baby wipes to me same thing water wipes same thing does the same result sometimes I might definitely add a little bit of my Clinique cleanser on the wipe of course so I've already got the cleanser and it's a great product all I just need is the actual wipe part so I might go cheaper on the wipe and not so much the beauty product and then I put the two together I definitely do things like that all the time and I definitely make loads of coffees um, at home and I think that, you know, one of the captures is after the gym, a lot of people might be like, oh, my God, I'm so going to treat myself with a coffee right now. And I'm thinking, no, you're not. You're going to walk five more metres, jump in the car and make on when you get home. 
So, um, well, all those savings really do add up, and that's a great one about the makeup wipes. You don't need to go and buy the expensive wipes, or you can, as you say, use your your Clinique makeup remover even on a on a tea towel or not tea towel. Sorry, that's a, on a um, flannel. As yes, well, oh, to of course, money. of course. I think there's there's loads of things there's that loads, I do. Yeah. I think one of the biggest ones is kids' foods. I think kids' food is really. Um, I'm not saying it's expensive. I'm just saying it can be very wasteful because a lot of the time they don't eat everything, yes. and then they just run out of the cafe like it was nothing. And you're like, oh, I just spent fifteen dollars on that. Yes. So I think personally, a um, this is my favorite. Um, like a cheese sandwich or a ham cheese sandwich is generally that bet like seven dollars fifty maybe. Um, you could actually go to Aldi and get a whole tub of like two packets inside the one, so a bulk slice cheese plus my Nuttalex because that's what we have, mm-hmm. and also a loaf of bread which would be about three dollars forty. So I do know some of my figures when I you know you really up. know I, your yeah figures. I think you it is three dollars like, forty for the whole meal. <laughs> I love that though. Yeah. That's why you're so inspiring. Um, and you? then all together that's seven dollars fifty. So you are so right. I think I tap myself on the mat going, Yeah, yeah you got this. And Saving I'm like money. that's seven days worth of sandwiches for one. I mean that's huge. It's huge. That's a win. That was a, what kid doesn't love a toasted cheese and ham sandwich. So, yeah, that, exactly. That is not gonna get wasted. That's not gonna get thrown Well, that water. feels really good because when the lunchbox comes back and yesterday it was like half a sandwich was still left, I was like, see? Said she would have wasted that. Exactly, exactly. As we rock, wrap up this podcast, and apologies for the listeners that can hear my this is screaming apple who sounds like a dying cow. She's safe downstairs. Someone is looking after. She's just trying to. She's discovered that we are here making this podcast and is desperately trying to crawl her way back up to us. But my ending question for you is: What advice would you give your younger self? I, I do like that one. Um, my advice would be. Read as much as you can possibly read and also read subjects that aren't your favourite and things that you're not overly interested in in the sense that um, read about, you know, trying to, you know, be mature and finances like the financial review. Try to understand what they're saying um, when they're speaking about the dollar Mm. on the news. And I know that's a lot to ask, but I think sometimes... (laughs) I think sometimes um, you need to really think outside the square. Not even sure if we had YouTube back then, but I would have loved to watch a lot more of the motivational speakers um, mm. back in my day. I think I wish I knew more about that or had an interest for it. I think what happens is we really are wanting to be kids and you can't take that away from the age category that we're in. Yeah. Uh, but the more you learn when you're younger, I guess it's great direction because it kind of does instill in you what is appropriate when you become a young adult and 16 years of age is actually a young adult yeah someone um and i did i had fantastic direction from my parents as well um oh gee what else would i tell my youngest listen as much as you possibly can and hang around people that are older than you it's a it's a really good mentality we we don't have a crystal ball but to see other either single people or couples, families, the way that um, they either what they can offer their children or what they are offering their children, the house that they live in, the car that they drive, the job that they have, where do you want to go and what do you want to be and who's doing that now when you're 16, 17, who in their 30s is there? Mm. What are they doing and work backwards. I've always believed in life. Look where you want to go and work backwards. What are the steps that you need to take to get what they have if that's who inspires you? Oh, wow. Like I am, I'm blown away because I'm listening to you talk. I'm like, that's how I think. I <laughs> work backwards. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I love to God, evolve. I'm so glad I'm not on my own. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, wow, this is so refreshing because sometimes I think, am I like a little bit crazy in my own mm. way of thinking? But no. And and this is why you, where you are today with your construction business and interior and, and you know, an incredibly inspiring single mother standing on her own two feet, hustling, head down, bum up, working her backside off, but also looking fabulous and, and just gliding through life gracefully. I'm not sure about the gracefully. <laughs> no, no, this is what you can, you can pat yourself up on, on the back about that, but Look, Carly, thank you so much for coming on to my podcast. I greatly Thanks. appreciate it. It's been and, a pleasure. Um, and enjoyable. I recommend everyone goes and checks out Kylie's Instagram account because it's it's really lovely to see what you are out and about and what you're doing and, and of course, how much of a present mother you are. You can really see it. Thanks. And, you know, that genuine connection. And that's the one thing I always try and 
you know, I talk about money, I talk about investing, get ahead, getting ahead financially, but at the end of the day, it's so that we don't need to worry about money so we can be present with our children. Absolutely. Yes. It's, it is. Money is um, the source for freedom. Exactly. Exactly. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this morning's podcast. And a quick favor is to leave a rating and a review. Please feel free, of course, to share this podcast with any of your family and friends. And of course, please make sure you check Kylie and myself out on Instagram. That's where we will provide you with all our motivation, inspiration, and education for living our best lives possible. All right, everyone. Ciao for now. Thank you. Thank you.